Hi, I'm Greg Lavadera, and welcome to part three of our video series on how to build Nordic style walls in the United States. In the first video, we looked at why we should be looking to Sweden as an example of how we can build walls here. In the second video, we looked at precisely how we could configure those walls to be like the Swedish walls. And in part three, we're going to look at how to frame houses to best take advantage of these high-performance walls we'll be building. Okay, let's get into it. After you've tackled some of these high-performance wall configurations and you feel comfortable with them, then you'll be ready to try the next step in improving the performance of your construction. The Swedes have made several common sense changes to the way they frame walls, to the way they frame houses, all in service of better energy performance. These changes are a natural evolution of the Western platform frame, which is widely used in the United States. Every builder in the United States has worked with a Western platform frame. They're familiar with it. This is the predominant method for framing houses in the United States. It's a, a brilliant refinement of the first stud framing system, balloon framing. And we should probably look at a little bit of background on that if you're not familiar with it. Before balloon framing, houses were framed with large dimension timbers. They were spaced relatively far apart as needed for strength and they were infilled with various materials, sometimes masonry, sometimes small, small members of wood. Balloon framing introduced the wood stud. These were revolutionary. It was a uniform size milled piece of wood. It was a relatively small, light piece of wood. They were spaced closely in order to create strength and they became universally available. It was industrially produced and this was all happening at the time of the Industrial Revolution. In balloon framing these studs ran from the first floor platform all the way up to the roof to support the roof rafters. The second floor in the two-story house in balloon framing would be supported off the side of the studs. Typically a ribbon member, as it would be called, would be let into the side of the studs, creating a ledge that the second floor joists would rest on. So balloon framing was brilliant. Um, spread all over the United States, uh, allowed houses to be built quickly by small crews. Man, the stud was light enough for a man to handle. Western platform framing came about. Its primary, pr primary innovation was framing the first floor walls and second floor walls separately. The first floor walls would be stood up and a second floor platform would be built on top of those walls, very similar to the first floor platform resting on the foundation. And then second floor wall panels would be built and tilted up and uh, the second floor provided a working platform for the construction to proceed. The stud lengths were shorter so they were lighter and easier to handle and in today's lumber market, um, getting long, straight studs like were used in the day of balloon framing um, is very unusual and very, can be very expensive. So Western platform framing has universally replaced balloon framing and is the, the primary method for framing houses in the United States. And in, in the 1970s, it's also the same method used in Sweden. Now, the issue today is that the, the simplicity uh, that makes Western platform construction so desirable also works against its energy performance. It has multiple horizontal members that create thermal bridges from the inside to the outside of the house. This makes it hard to create a high performance wall system using Western platform framing. So what we'd like to do, so you can directly see the, the, these improvements that have been made, is look at the Western platform frame side by side with the Swedish platform frame. Okay, here we go. What we're looking at here are two 3D models. We have a model of Swedish platform framing on the right and a model of conventional Western platform framing on the left. Both of these walls are framed with um, gang-nailed 
open web tr trusses. It's a very common method used in the United States as well as in Sweden. Um, the Western Platform frame wall we're looking at is framed with 2x6 studs. And the Swedish Platform frame wall we're looking at is actually framed with 2x8 studs. So first, let's look at the Western Platform framed wall. This should be very familiar to any builder watching the video. I'm showing it on a 12-inch block foundation. I realize a lot of uh, locations in the United States will be using a cast concrete foundation wall. That's fine. Um, doesn't make a difference for the purposes of, of this comparison. So what we have uh, as the first component of the wall is pressure-treated wood sill plates. Conventional um, practice is to use two sill plates um, in decent construction. In the United States, very frequently you'll find only one, but we're showing two here. Um, of course, two sill plates give you more thermal transfer from the inside to the outside. There's several different ways you can insulate the basement wall and extend that up into this joist space. Uh, we're not going to cover those here, but um, some methods are easier than others. We're looking here at the insulation let into that joist space below the first floor deck. This member here is a, called a, a ribbon member. It connects the top of the trusses and gives you a good nail base for the um, sill plate of the wall above. That's something that's not always included in um, American uh, construction, but again it's um, a good quality indicator. The reason why it's not often done, it means a doubling up of the studs in the truss member there, but it it makes for a more substantial wall construction. So the, the first thing you'll notice is that we've got two sill plates, okay, and a single sole plate for the wall above. So right here in this configuration we have three opportunities for thermal transfer from the inside to the outside. On the inside of the wall will be our drywall finish, which is not shown in this case, but um, there's no insulation isolating the stud from the interior or the exterior, so that means heat is free to travel through this stud and leave the house. So that's this is precisely the situation that we want to try to overcome in Swedish platform framing. Okay, so let's go over to the Swedish platform frame wall and see how that same condition is handled. Okay, the first thing you notice is we have just a single sill plate. In prefabricated construction in Sweden, this sill plate would be split into like a tongue and groove configuration so that the sill plate could be anchored to the, the foundation wall and then when the wall above comes in suspended from the crane, it can just lock into that tongue and groove connection without having to carefully position the wall. In other words, they're carefully positioning the wall. So we have only one sill plate here. So we have only one place where heat can travel uninterrupted from the interior to the exterior. The floor truss is the same. We have it isolated on a separate um, sill plate here. That's simply a practical concern um, because of the width of the, the sill plate. 2 by 8 underneath the 2 by 8 stud wall. 2 by 4 sill plate for bearing under the floor joist. Now, you see our studs now continue straight up from that sill plate because our floor joists are inside of the studs. So, we've eliminated the ground floor sole plate and, in effect, we've eliminated that opportunity for heat to transfer from the inside to the outside. Second, um, this, this area between the floor joists, which is often very difficult to insulate well, is precluded because our wall insulation can extend all the way down to the top of the foundation wall. As well, our vapor retarder layer can extend all the way down where it can be sealed effectively against the foundation. Now, the Swedes will also include about 24 inches deep of insulation within this space, again, to further mitigate um, the the invasion of cold into the improved condition over the western platform frame. So if we count our thermal bridges, we have three over here at the western platform frame, and over here at the Swedish platform frame, we have just one. 
you can see the exterior insulation layer and the interior wiring space with insulation which are the important components of the USA new wall that we looked at in the earlier video the furring strips that are horizontal that provide the standoff for the interior drywall that makes this wiring space and the plane in between this furring and the studs is where the vapor retarder layer gets installed okay time to look at the second floor level. Okay, if we come up to the top of the ground floor walls, typical western platform frame, the ground floor studs will be topped by a double top plate. This provides strength so that if a floor joist happens to land between studs, these two top plates will be strong enough to transfer that load to the nearest stud. We have the similar, very similar floor joist to the trusses on the ground floor and then this is also very familiar the start of the second floor walls same condition we have a single sole plate and that begins our second floor wall okay that's that's typical western platform construction right there let's skip over to the Swedish platform frame and see what's going on okay the first thing we notice is that the ground floor studs continue all the way up to the underside of the second floor deck. There they're topped by a single top plate, not a double. And we have our plywood deck, and then we have the single sole plate of the second floor wall. Our floor joists once again are inboard of our studs, and this time they are supported on a deep ledger. In this case, I believe we're indicating here a 2x6 ledger. That would be lag bolted into the studs. Now, <coughs> this is very important because this allows our vapor barrier to continue uninterrupted all the way up to the underside of the deck as well as our wall insulation. So this condition over at the western platform frame which is often very difficult to insulate well and often impossible to establish a continuous vapor barrier in through the, the joist members even worse so when it's a truss is here completely isolated to the interior right, very simple it takes advantage of the wiring chase to create a, a location for the joist ledger the plywood deck extends all the way over the stud wall which locks the construction together for wind bracing and, and other concerns creating a, a floor diaphragm for lateral bracing. So we have um, a single thermal bridge here. We might say that this top plate is part of that thermal bridge but again it's terminated against um, an interior insulation layer that extends back into the joist space. Over at the western platform frame we have two thermal bridges the top of the ground floor wall, one at the bottom of the second floor wall, brings our total thermal bridges to the western platform frame to six. Brings our total for the Swedish platform frame to two. Okay, let's continue up and see what's happening at the roof. We come up to the roof level. Once again, the wall studs are topped by a double top plate which are supporting the floor joy, the, the roof rafters. Again, it's a double top plate to allow enough strength if a rafter does not land directly on top of a stud. Now there's a um, an alternate western platform frame wall framing system in the United States referred to as advanced framing system. The idea with that is to eliminate one of these top plates and in doing it commit yourself to always aligning your roof rafters as well as your floor joists to always lining up. Um, it's an unrealistic expectation. Um, it creates a, a grid for the entire house based on 24 inch centers and I, the proof is in the pudding. Um, very few builders have adopted this as a way to build. So I I have to dismiss it as, as not being a way forward. 
the improvements are minimal. All we're doing in that situation is eliminating one of these thermal bridges. All the other conditions that exist here are still weak. Um, it begs the exterior insulation layer and the interior wiring and insulation layer to improve it. So advanced framing, my opinion, is not so advanced. Let's go over and look at the roof condition and the Swedish platform frame. Okay, we have a single top plate. We have the wiring chase that exists on the wall level extending across the ceiling level. That enables us to bring the vapor barrier again across the underside of the studs, allowing wiring to continue underneath the roof framing without interruption. And this configuration isolates this top plate from the interior. So optimally, we, we've picked up no more thermal bridges at the roof. We do have some continuity of framing from the roof truss from the exterior. Again, that's mitigated by the interior wiring layer, which receives the inch and a half insulation. So there we have it. The two are very similar but there's been some very neat thermal bridges and make it easier to build a high-performance wall. So now you've seen them both. So there you have it. You've seen each of the, the critical conditions, foundation, second floor, roof condition, for the Western platform frame and the Swedish platform frame, um, it's clear that the number of thermal bridges, the opportunities for heat to travel from the inside to the outside, are greatly reduced. The Swedish platform frame promotes the continuous layer of insulation bypassing uh, the floor framing, which are the areas typically uh, weak and difficult to insulate well in Western platform framing. You can see how it promotes the uninterrupted extension of the interior air and vapor barrier which allows you to make the house airtight and you can see how it's integrated with the USA new wall the, the American interpretation of the Swedish wall types so this this is a, a small step an easy steps to take from Western platform framing but make significant improvements to the energy performance of such a wall. This is a heating climate wall. It's not something that we're um, advocating for um, southern and predominantly cooling climates. Uh, but you can also see that there's nothing really radical going on here. Any uh, American carpenter that is competent with building a western platform frame can build a house configured this way. Any builder can step into building very high performance houses this way that's what we'd like to see happen here. Remember any links that we may have mentioned we will put them in the description below. You can read more about all of these uh, walls and details at those links and uh, next we'll go on to look at some examples of um, not the USA new wall, not Swedish platform frame, but other wall configurations that are being built here in the United States that take advantage of many of these same principles. So come back for video number four. Take care.